Some people call me the luckiest girl in my small town in Colorado. I was the only child to my successful parents who never wanted me to know what they did for a living. Once, when I was around six, I snuck into dad's office. Dad, what are you doing? Jessica, are you in my office? Where are you? Under your table. I want you to tell me about your job. Dad quickly changed the subject, the same way mom does. I didn't understand, but I couldn't complain because they bought me everything I wanted and more. And then one day, when I was around 10, my parents came back from a busy day and I was so excited to see them because the whole week they spoke about a big surprise they had for me. Jessica, come downstairs. Your surprise is here. As I ran down, I kept imagining that it was the latest iPad I asked for since I was obsessed with the latest tech devices. But when I got down, there was this girl who looked almost like me. Who is this? This is your sister. What? I thought babies come from your tummy, and she's too big to be a baby. So how is she my sister? We adopted her. Jessica, meet Rebecca. And Rebecca, please meet our one and only little princess, Jessica. Rebecca looked at me, and then she stepped forward and suddenly curtsied. Lovely to meet you, Jessica. I didn't know how to react at that moment because my parents never told me they were bringing home a stranger. Nice to meet you too, Rebecca. Rebecca took some time to open up to me, so after a week of having her around, I thought I would do something nice. So I threw her a treehouse party. But as soon as she stepped in, she suddenly fell down the treehouse. Rebecca! I was shocked out of my mind. I had no idea what had made her suddenly fall like that until I got down and she started screaming. Get away from me! This girl started freaking out on me. Her arm was injured, and I just wanted to help. Mom and Dad came running to her. Oh my goodness, what happened? Jessica pushed me down. What? I did not push you. Rebecca cried louder, and my parents rushed her to the hospital. I was so confused. Why would she blame me for something that I didn't do? At the hospital, no matter how many times I tried to explain to Mom and Dad that I didn't do anything, they still doubted me. We brought Rebecca to you because we thought you felt lonely in our big house. And if you didn't like her, you should have just said something instead of just pushing her down. While they were busy lecturing me, Mom received a phone call and signaled the Dad to take me out of the room. They acted so secretive. But I had a bigger problem to worry about than my parents' mysterious life. I had to deal with the little lying Pinocchio, Rebecca. After that incident, I decided to keep my distance from Rebecca and focus on what I loved the most, school. I was the smartest and all the teachers adored me. But there was one girl who couldn't stand me because she struggled to get high grades, Nancy. If you stare at your score any longer, you might just magically turn into a zero. Nancy, just bring back my results and stop being a bitter loser. You will always stay one step behind me. When Nancy waved the paper in front of my face for me to catch it, Rebecca suddenly tripped her and she fell flat on her face. I don't need you to fight my battles. I disliked Rebecca so much after the stunt she pulled and now she was trying to save me. That's just crazy. And then during recess while I stood in the line to buy my lunch, Rebecca was right behind me and suddenly speaking to me. I'll tell your parents the truth. You didn't push me. Why did you do that? I did nothing bad to you. When your dad called you their one and only princess, I felt so jealous. Because why did they adopt me when they already have someone they love so much? I'm sorry that you feel that way. But our parents love us both. They were really worried about you after you injured your arm. Rebecca suddenly hugged me and cried on my shoulder. Thank you for calling them our parents. It means a lot. After that, I grew fond of Rebecca, and we became the best sisters ever. Years went by, and then we were in high school. Rebecca and I had a bond that could never be broken. And then one day, I found her crying in the bathroom. Rebecca, what happened? Oh, Jessica, everything is going to be ruined now. Hey, talk to me. Tell me what's wrong. My real mother is here. She's the new janitor. Rebecca has been in our lives for so long, I even forgot that she was adopted. That's great news. At least now you know who your real mother is. I've always known who my real mother was. She left me at the orphanage when I was eight, and I was lucky that your parents adopted me then. But now she's here and she wants me back. 
Rebecca told me not to say anything to mom and dad, but I couldn't stop thinking about this. I loved Rebecca so much, and I didn't want anyone to take her away. So that night, I waited for her to fall asleep, and then I snuck into mom and dad's room. I found Rebecca crying today, but she asked me not to say anything. We are glad you came to us with this, hon. Yes, and don't worry, no one will be taking your sister away. She is our family now. After speaking to my parents, I felt so relieved and was able to finally go to bed. And then the next day, when Rebecca and I got home after school, we found mom and dad in the living room with Rebecca's real mom. Rebecca suddenly looked at me angry and lashed out. I told you to keep it a secret! I… I know, but… But nothing, Jessica! You broke my trust! She ran off to her room, and that was the end of our sister bond. Then the next thing mom and dad said made no sense. Rebecca's mom will be living with us for a while. She wants to get to know Rebecca. And we think it's a spectacular idea. No, mom. She left her when she was just a little girl. Why are you doing this? I was struggling so much back then, and I really didn't want to give her up. Please, she's all that I have. After hearing her story, I felt sorry for Rebecca's mom and accepted mom and dad's decision for her to stay for a while. But Rebecca was not happy at all. The next day at school, Rebecca planted a little surprise for me in my locker. <gasps> Rotten cheese. It made my entire locker smell. <laughs> I see you got my little gift. Rebecca, why are you doing this? You know why. Because you ratted me out. And rats eat rotten cheese. I only told mom and dad to protect you. Now get this cheese out of my locker. Now! Rebecca suddenly <gasps> pushed me against the locker and spoke to me so harshly. It's like she turned into a monster overnight. I'm done being your friend. You spoiled brat! Rebecca, you are acting out for no reason. After what happened with Rebecca, I wanted to ask my parents to speak to her. But when I got home, she was already there with Nancy. And when I entered, my parents looked upset with me. Jessica, why did you attack Rebecca at school? This is so unlike you. What? She's lying. I would never do something like that. Her friend says she saw the whole thing. They're both lying. Rebecca started crying on Nancy's shoulder. And when my parents weren't looking, Rebecca smiled wolfishly at me. I have a very big reputation at school, and I would never lie. Your daughter Jessica acted like a wild barbarian at school today. If I'm a barbarian, then you are the devil himself, standing here and lying to- That's enough. Now go to your room. This is unacceptable. You're grounded for a week. I couldn't believe my parents didn't believe me. They looked at me like I wasn't their child. And while I was moping about what happened, I heard some voices from outside my bedroom window. When I peeked through my curtain, I saw my parents and Rebecca's mom. I opened my window slightly without them noticing and managed to hear everything they were saying. The girls will soon turn 18 and we need to plan their next step. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on all that money their parents left them. Yes, I'm tired of playing sweet daddy. I should be on an island enjoying the sea breeze. And I don't have to play the stupid role of being the janitor. I can't believe how smoothly our plan worked. They are now at each other's throats. It's going to be a piece of cake getting them to sign those papers. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. My heart raced as I heard footsteps by my door. I quickly shut my eyes tight as the door opened. Jessica? Jessica? I kept my eyes closed, hoping that she would eventually go away. She's fast asleep. That's good. We should be careful where we have our meetings now. After they closed the door, I opened my eyes and started panicking. I had to speak to Rebecca. The next morning, I overslept. But when I went downstairs, I had to be strong and pretend like I heard nothing. Good morning, sleepyhead. You're up late today. Yeah, I forgot to set my morning alarm. At least I still have time for breakfast. Actually, you don't. We're almost late for school. Okay. I'll just grab an apple. As soon as we entered the school doors, Nancy hung onto Rebecca like glue. Hey, best friend! Rebecca, I need to talk to you. Oh, buzz off, Jessica! You buzz off, Nancy! She's my sister! Adopted sister. Rebecca pushed past me, with Nancy smiling wickedly at me. And when Nancy ran off to go to the bathroom, it was my chance to get Rebecca alone. Rebecca, I have something really important to tell you. Hey, girls! Are you two back to being best sisters? No, 
And stop following me around school. I don't want people to think that I'm the janitor's daughter. When Rebecca walked off, I tried to go after her, but her so-called real mother held me back. Give her some space. She'll talk to you when she's ready. Just having her hold my arm gave me the chills. After she went off, I knew what I had to do to get Rebecca to hear me out. When it was time for cheerleading practice, I waited for everyone to leave the room, and once the coast was clear, I opened Rebecca's locker. I still remembered her password, and then I quickly searched for her hairbrush, got strands of her hair, and put everything back. I ran to the school science lab, where I thankfully found my science teacher, Mrs. Broody. Jessica, what can I do for you? I need to test these two samples to see if the DNA matches. I gave Mr. Broody a sample of my hair and a sample of Rebecca's hair. Whose hair samples are these? It's mine and Rebecca's. I overheard my parents talk last night and they said some really shocking things. Okay, please don't tell anyone I did this for you. It's against the school policy. I left the samples with Mrs. Broody and the next step was finding out who my real parents were. As soon as I got home after school, I searched for my ID document inside my chest drawer. In that moment when I found it, Mom appeared. Jessica, I didn't know you were back from school. Yeah, um, I just got back and I'm going to the library. I felt so awkward around everyone in the house because in my head I knew they were strangers. And as I passed my mom, she suddenly held my hand and I froze. Do you need a ride to the library? No, I need the exercise so I can walk there. I felt so relieved when I got out of the house, and I felt like I was being followed. But every time I looked back, there was no one. Until I noticed our gardener standing next to a dustbin, acting like a street person. Mom obviously asked him to wear that disguise and follow me, but I was no fool. I continued to walk towards the library, and then ran in and out the back door, until I lost Mom's spy guard. When I finally reached the home affairs department, my heart almost stopped when the lady told me that my ID document was fake. How can I find out my real identity? Simple, your fingerprint. You can fake a document, but not a fingerprint. Once my fingerprint was taken, the police suddenly appeared and took me in for questioning. Why am I here? We have been looking for you and your sister for 17 years. When your parents passed away, they left you under the care of the state. But when we went to search for you, you and your sister were nowhere to be found. But all this doesn't make sense. The parents who took care of me gave me everything. The people who have been illegally taking care of you have been your uncle and his wife. Your parents had two trust funds. One was to give you and your sister the best life possible as kids. But your fake parents withdrew all that money and the next trust fund is more than millions and will be released when you and your sister turn 18. When the officer was about to tell me what to do next, my phone rang and it was mom. You should come home, Jessica. Something has happened to Rebecca. I immediately ran out of the station after I got mom's call. My sister was the only real family I have, and I would protect her at any cost. When I got back home, the people whom I thought were my parents were waiting for me in the living room with Nancy. What happened to Rebecca? Where is she? We'll tell you once you tell us what you've been up to. What is going on here? Why are you here, Nancy? Because you've been living my life all this time with my parents who sacrificed their time with me to be fake parents to you, all for the sake of money. And now, you will not ruin things for us. Fine, you can have all the money. Just tell me where Rebecca is. I could hear <gasps> Rebecca screaming through the walls. Please, just let her go. You will have to wait until it's her real birthday, which is actually in two days' time. And then, while these wicked money greedy people were smiling wickedly in front of me, a gang of cops busted into the house. I guess Rebecca and I will have our happy birthday after all, while you rot in prison. Rebecca's fake mom was also found and arrested, and my real sister and I lived happily ever after. <laughs> the lesson here, money greedy people always get caught out. But an honest living will take you a long way.